Hello boys and girls, welcome back to Mr. Herring's fifth grade math class, our interactive notebook lessons. Today we are going to be talking about uh, multiplication, our introduction to multiplication. It's a bit of a review from fourth grade. So the I can statement today, I can multiply single digit factors by double and triple digit factors. So that means I'm multiplying uh, two by one, three by one, and even four by one. All right, and again, this is a review from fourth grade just to get our feet wet before we start doing the more uh, advanced multiplication with algorithms, all right? So let's look at it. Here is our multiplication table. You should have picked one of these up, a uh, blank one, and filled it in. It should be glued into your notes. Make sure you have your journal open to this page. You will need it along with the notes page to do today's lesson. So this is what you did last year in fourth grade. You talked about something called partial products. That means if you had the factor 107 times 9, what that means is 100 times 9 and 7 times 9. And 100 times 9 would give me 900. And 7 times 9 would give me 63. And if I put those two together, we get 963. That is partial products. That is what multiplication in this form means, all right? So we have two strategies that we've learned. Uh, I know we all learned the traditional algorithm last year in fourth grade, but most of us were still developing the partial products uh, method, which is fine. But this year we are gonna focus more on the traditional algorithm because it is much more efficient and makes us better mathematicians, all right? So let's look at the two side by side. So partial products, 245 times three and traditional algorithm, 245 times three. The partial products, we take 200 and multiply it by three, which gives me 600. And then I take 40 and multiply it by three. Well, three times four is 12. So 40 times three is 120. And then five times three, which is 15. And then we add them all together and get 735. But with the traditional algorithm, you'll notice it's a little bit shorter. So I start with saying the ones times the ones, three times five is 15. Now notice I put the one here because I'm carrying that group of tens. I can only put up to nine in the ones place. So three times five is 15 ones. So I have five ones and I carry that 10. Now three times four is 12. So that's 12 tens plus one more 10 gives me 13 tens. And I carry that one again. And then three times two, which is 600 plus that 100 gives me 700. Now notice the difference in the amount of work. All right, it's a little bit shorter, which is the algorithm is something that mathematicians like to create is shortcuts, makes things a little more efficient and faster especially later on in life when you have these immense mathematical equations and problems to solve, you wanna know these algorithms. So in fifth grade, we're gonna use the standard algorithm. And I like to start off by using grid paper at first, just because it helps you keep things a little neat. All right, so let's look how it works in grid paper. Letter A, 24 times seven. So I write 24, I put the multiplication sign over here, times seven, draw a line. And notice these boxes will give me a place to put my numbers. So I start with the ones place, seven times four, which is 28. And then seven times two, the tens times the ones, seven times two is 14, plus two gives me 16, for a total of 168. Letter B, 31 times nine, I have 31 times nine, Notice I'm lining up my numbers. Nine times one is nine. Nine times three is 27. So my answer is 279. And it does take a little bit of practice, but once you get into the rhythm of things and, and recognize it, it says this, it, nothing changes, the process remains the same. No matter how many factors you have, it does make it a lot easier. So how, how about if I have a three by one? Again, it doesn't change the process. We still use the same process. I start with five times two, which gives me 10. And then five times one, which is five, plus that one gives me six. And then five times four gives me 20. So 2,060. All right. 
732 times 2. We start with 2 times 2, which is 4. 2 times 3, which is 6. And then 2 times 7, which is 14. 1,464. Next one, 8 times 1, which is 8. 8 times 4, which is 32. And then 8 times 3, 24 plus 3 gives me 27, 2,728. And the last one, 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 5 is 15, 1,596. All right. Please feel free to rewind this and watch all that again just to make sure you're familiar with that process as a reminder of what we did in fourth grade. <clears throat> so let's practice. So I want you to work this problem out on the grid paper I provided. Once you've worked it out, go on to the next slide. Hit pause, and when you're done, continue until you've gone through all four slides. At the end, I will show you the answers and you can check your work. Okay? So go ahead and put pause, and when you're ready, you can continue to the next slide and then hit pause again. Question number two, when you're ready to continue or you're ready to work it out, hit pause, work it out on your paper, hit play to see the next problem. Problem number three, work it out on your grid paper. Hit pause when you are done and ready for the next problem, hit play. And problem number four, it's a four digit by three digit. It doesn't change the process. Work it out on your grid paper, give yourself plenty of space. And when you're ready to see the answers to all of them, hit play for all of the answers. So here are the answers to all of the questions. 34 times 3, 52 times 6, 312 times 5, and 5,426 times 3. Check your answers to the answer key here. If one of them is incorrect, go back and check your work to see where you made the mistake. All right, if you are ready to go on, we'll go ahead and go on. So now, for the activity, you and your elbow partner, when they are finished with the video, are each going to get a die. You are going to roll the die to create either a 3x1 or a 4x1 multiplication problem on the partner showdown sheet I gave you. Once you roll the die and you put it in one of the spots, you cannot move it. It has to stay in that digit. And then once you filled all the squares, you may begin working your problem. You and your partner will do this five different times, okay? Once you've each completed five different problems, I want you guys to add up all of your products from the each product from every problem for a grand sum. It goes in that star. And then once that's done, the person who has the lowest, I'll mix it up, the lowest total will win the game, okay? So the lowest total wins. I'm going to tell you right now. All right? So take your time. Make sure you're looking at your notes. Work out five problems. Compare your, your grand sum and see who has the lowest total. Okay? And then after that, you can go ahead and start on your homework if you like. All right? But please take your time and remain quiet at your station. Okay, guys. Good luck. 